What's going on team? Welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the newly released uh, Black Desert Online expansion, Mountain of Eternal Winter. Now, it's been a little bit of time since it's came out and people have had a little bit of time to explore the region, do a little bit of grinding in it, kill the mobs, explore, check things out, all that good stuff. And I've done the same. And in today's video, I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about my opinion on the region's release. The good, the bad, the ugly, and just the overall impact that this expansion is going to have on Black Desert as a whole for the new player, the veteran player. And now when you hear the word expansion and its relation to an MMO, a lot of times people really think of it in the same aspect as like a World of Warcraft expansion, you know, like a theme park MMO expansion where there's a new part of the game that gets unlocked and released and pretty much everything gets reset and you progress pretty much from zero moving all the way up until you get to that new end game cap and that new expansion. Well, in Black Desert, that's not how things work. Obviously, this game is a sandbox MMO, not a theme park, and the gear and all of the stuff that you get with new regions a lot of times doesn't replace anything that you currently have. More of just a side grade and sometimes very, very marginal upgrades. And that doesn't even happen in every single expansion. This, however, does mark a new piece of gear that is a big upgrade for a lot of people in regards to the Fallen God set, the Labresca helmet, equivalent to a C20 Griffin or Gieth at duo, and being able to go past the current quote unquote cap of DP on the helmet slot by going up to try and Tet. This is the same thing as the Fallen God armor that we got with Odalita, so it's no real surprise that it works pretty much the same exact way. And uh, actually, you obtain it in a very similar fashion as well. Similar to Odalita, there is a system uh, with embers and a flame to upgrade your C10 Griffin or Giath in this case to the Labresca helmet. Uh, unlike Odalita, though, there are actual multiple spots you can go ahead and grind in order to get the actual ember drops. Uh, in Odalita, it was only Turos, and in the Mountain of Eternal Winter, there are a couple spots the Jade Starlight Forest as well as the Murawak Labyrinth. As a veteran player like myself, who has a pretty high emphasis on pushing for gear and progression, the flame and ember system is the main reason why I'm here grinding in the Mountain of Eternal Winter. Uh, to be completely honest with you, this uh, whole region, for in a lot of people's opinion, and including mine, is relatively underwhelming in terms of money per hour. And that's a really big part of the whole you know, viability of a new region. While the money isn't horrible, it's just not super duper competitive compared to other spots like Elvia Orcs, Bloody Monastery, and even Gyphon actually. So if they're not being a really big draw for silver per hour, the only real reason to come here is strictly for the embers and or the flame drop. I personally have spent most of my time grinding Jade Starlight Forest for the embers and the flame. I know a lot of people who have done the Murawak Labyrinth and a lot of people call it bugs, a little bit of bug grinding. Um, I've done a little bit of it. I'm not a huge fan overall. Uh, it's just okay, but I usually need to be uh, a little bit more on and off in my grind just to be able to, you know, take care of my dogs and whatever. So I, I like the flexibility of the Jade Starlight Force in that regard. So I spent most of my time there. I'm currently still grinding for the embers right now. And from what I can tell, the average ember... Uh, per hour is going to be around two. Uh, I've spent a good amount of time here myself, pretty much maintaining that two ember an hour. Some hours obviously I get super carried and then I get skunked on others. It's just the way it is. But overall, I've averaged to about two embers an hour. Uh, and a lot of people have said very similar, you know, numbers. Um, that's also running full buffs, loot scroll, uh, the 30% snowflakes, uh, J scrolls, old moon scrolls, the dragon winter fossil thingies that give 30% drop rate as well. And I'm still averaging about two embers an hour. So in comparison to Odalita, ember drop rate is a little bit lower and makes this grind for the Labresca Helm feel a lot more tedious and a lot less enjoyable. Uh, to be completely honest, I think the Jade Starlight Forest area is actually really nice to grind. And I like the mix up in pacing for the Murawak Labyrinth as well. But the fact that you're only here for the embers 
and the drop rate of them is really low and you're constantly just opening up inventory checking how many embers you have and saying okay i need 62 more embers i need 54 more embers i need 43 more embers like this really dampens the overall feeling and the and the excitement of the grind even though the spots themselves are actually kind of good and they feel kind of fun to grind they just lack a little bit of money and you're counting down the embers and you just want to get the embers so you can make the helmet and get the hell out of here and it's just kind of dampens the overall feeling of the region in my opinion and this happens a lot of times where they release a new region and they always undertune the money per hour for these new regions and a lot of people get very upset over this exact sentiment but in my opinion personally i think this isn't a bad thing right now because if these spots were the new best spots to grind for money and for the embers i think that these grind spots would be so unbelievably crowded and hectic that nobody would really even be able to grind and i somewhat feel like this is a tactical release like strategy that pearl abyss does because it is already unbelievably packed at jade starlight forest it's like actually insane but i can't imagine if it was 750 mil an hour what it would be like it would be insane so i honestly feel like how, even though it is currently underwhelming right now, I think that you could potentially see them buffing this place a little bit in the future and it becoming a little bit money, a little bit better money per hour. And it would also give people a little bit more of an incentive to, you know, come back later and give the people time to get their embers, you know, do the flame grind, get that out of the way. And then if they feel like coming back when the silver's a little bit better, they, they can, but they're not going to be feeling forced to grind in these particular spots because as of right now i know a lot of people are just like i'd rather not grind here and make no money and spend all this time getting these embers i'll just put an order up and i'll wait and honestly that's i feel like somewhat of a good thing outside of the new grind spots for more veteran players they've completely revamped the new player experience with a brand new starting story mission for the mountain of eternal winter that is fully voice acted with a lot of voice acted cutscenes, which is a first for Black Desert. And honestly, a nice change of pace. They really tried to capture that, you know, Final Fantasy-esque like storytelling, really wanted to get people invested in the story, get them involved with the characters, the development of the characters. And I think honestly, they did a pretty good job. I'm not a huge lore or story buff for this game. I, in the past in other games, I've liked it, but for this game, I've been playing without story for such a long time now that it's almost kind of hard to get into it. But as a new player, I could see it being really valuable. And it's honestly not that bad. Lando is a real one. He is a freaking gamer, okay? He's my dude, okay? But, you know, for me, like I said, I did a lot of the story already and I've skipped most of it. Your mileage may vary. You may enjoy it. I've heard really, really good things. But for me personally, it's not my cup of tea. As like I've said, I played this game for four years now without any story. So it's kind of weird to get into it now. Over the years, Black Desert has had a lot of expansions and new regions added to the game. And for most of the regions and expansions, they've kind of been dead content almost upon arrival. And that kind of begs the question, is Mountain of Eternal Winter pretty much DOA after you've get gotten the flame. And for a lot of people, I think that they would say, yeah, it is. I mean, they, they get their flame, they get their 100 embers, and then they never come back here again after getting the Lebreska helmet. Personally, I think overall, this has been probably their best expansion to date. And I know that may surprise a lot of you considering the fact that there have been expansions in the past that have changed the game quite a bit. And this one kind of just seems like a small addition. But really, when you look at all the stuff that we're getting, it's actually quite a lot. And not only the stuff that we're getting, but the groundwork that's being laid and what that means for the future of the game. So let's take a look at what we're getting with this expansion. We're getting an entirely brand new voice acted storyline with cutscenes voice acted as well. If you really care or want to get invested in the story in Black Desert, there are three new grind spots that you can do. Two of which I think are actually potentially very good if they did a couple of tweaks to some of the drop rates. Uh, I think if you were able to get slightly more embers an hour or if you were to get slightly more trash uh, money from trash per hour, these spots are almost good enough to cons be considered grinding for actual silver. And, you know, with, with the flame being valued at two bill, 
if the drop rate was a little bit higher for the embers i mean you can consider you can almost consistently crank out those those flames for a pretty good payout so as well as obviously the the actual raw drop i mean that could be some pretty good money potentially if they just increase the rates just a little bit they've also added one of probably the coolest things in the game outside of ataraxia the forgotten witch's token or the erethea's limbo is one of the best ways to break up a grind that i've ever experienced not gonna lie it's awesome silver per hour and it is interesting and you know engaging enough to not feel as if you're just doing another circle grind and killing mobs and not really paying attention it's pretty fun actually and the way i would describe this kind of interaction is the same feeling i got when you play a game like old school runescape and get a clue scroll from one of your slayer grinds it's a nice way to break up the actual grind it gives you pretty good rewards most of the time and in this case it actually gives you great rewards flat great silver an hour as well as maybe some little some little luck here and there with the embers or flame but really just a great way to add even more value to these grind spots uh, you know, rather than just a great way to break up a grind. And honestly, I wish they would do more things like this in other grind spots because it's honestly so much fun. There is also a good amount of useful things from alchemy. A lot that you get from grinding in this new region. Things that I probably am going to be using for Node Wars in the future. As well as some nice little things for PvE, such as the Bracing Spirit Perfume Elixir. Which is just something that you are able to just simple alk into a spirit perfume and it just gives you five monster ap from nothing extra it's just a little extra monster ap and it's like why not use this this is always going to be great so it just adds a lot of value there it could potentially when the price is actually stabilized could maybe be adding even more value to the grind spots down here in the mountain of eternal winter now do i think that this expansion is perfect no i do not i think there are definitely some issues and some things that could have been tweaked or worked on before the actual release of the region to north america and eu but i think we've got a really nice foundation for a potentially great new region to black desert online i don't think that there's any super substantial that they need to tweak it really just comes down to some minor drop rate tweaks as well as a couple of mechanical things with some of these grind spots that make them a little bit frustrating sometimes to grind. Let me know what you guys think down in the description of this region and this expansion as a whole. I'd love to hear from you. And if you guys did like the video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.